things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm about to start out. Bible study on this Wednesday night. We got a different format tonight. We're gonna be tag teaming it. <laughs> so we've been wanting to do for a while. So uh, we're tag teaming uh, tonight. And then you leave next week, so we'll tag team on, on yours too. Okay. Sound good? Yes. Alright. Uh, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to come together. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be in your house for a time. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. And that is our mantra, that is our mindset tonight, Lord God, as we uh, endeavor to uh, spend time in your house, Lord God, with one another fellowshipping and uh, learning of you, Lord God, getting closer to you and uh, lifting you up, promoting you as we've been doing all year long, Lord, Lord God, and just uh, allowing you to have your way. Bless us as we go forward. Let your word go forth. Uh, be on our hearts and be on our minds. And, and just give us, Lord God, whatever it is that you have for us tonight. Bless those that are here. Bless those that are not here, Lord God, that had a mind to be here. Bless those that are sick. Uh, and those that are going through, Lord God, we pray that you uh, touch, heal, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. And have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So tonight we have, uh, as we continue to go through the, the book of the Bible, the, the Bible from Genesis uh, to Revelations, we find ourselves in the book of Isaiah, which we have been there for a while. Uh, we're doing Isaiah 35 and 36 tonight, and I've been I've been having a good time going through the book, and it's been mostly uh, not gloom and doom, but even a lot of woes and a lot of wrath being poured out, uh, a lot of prophetic word, uh, and so we'll we'll finish up with that tonight in 35. Uh, then you have 36, 37, 38, 39, which is a bridge to the second part of Isaiah, which starts in 40, from 40 to 66. Uh, and so this first half, we've been dealing a lot with uh, Assyria, uh, and we'll do that again tonight. But once we cross that bridge over to 40, uh, 39, we get introduced to Babylon, Babylonia, and then from that point on, uh, we'll deal, they'll, uh, they'll be dealing a lot with uh, with those, uh, those guys, no please, et cetera, et cetera. Amen? All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Isaiah 35. Uh, what are we going to see in this chapter? We're going to see uh, the, the land being restored. We're going to see weak people being strengthened. We're going to see the sick and the diseased being healed. We're going to see abundance uh, replacing lack. We're going to talk a little bit about the highway of holiness, uh, which is made for God's people. We're going to talk about the safety of the highway of holiness, and we're going to talk about, uh, in general, uh, how God can restore. Amen. Uh, how, as long as we continue to trust God, He's able to uh, to restore us. Amen. Uh, and in this chapter, we talk about uh, the desert, and we get uh, a picture that's painted for us of a desolate picture, a desolate place. Uh, but even in that, we get the promise of uh, transformation, right? So no matter what we're going through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what uh, she's going through or he's going through, uh, there's always, we always have hope, amen? We always have that promise of God. And we know that the promises of God are yay, and the promises of God are amen, amen? So let's get started. Uh, the title that I had in my Bible was Zion's Happy Future. What's, what do you have in yours? Uh, 35 is joy for the redeemed. I like it. Uh, verse 1 and 2. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall re rejoice, and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. So, Verse 1 and 2, we're talking about a desert, a parched land being glad, and a wilderness rejoicing and blossoming. Uh, so when God steps into whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstance is, whatever the calamity is, whatever the trouble is, there's transformation, right? Uh, not only radical, but also marked by joy and should be celebrated. Amen? Amen. So when God comes in, he turns that thing around. We should be happy. We should be joyful. And the Bible says to rejoice always. 
And again, I said, rejoice. Amen. But we should rejoice uh, even before uh, we feel or we see. Amen. Because we know that uh, that faith. Because of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His character. Right. You know, he brings us. And when you said that, as you were saying that, I was thinking, like, <laughs> with what you're going through. I've got you. What's up before me? <laughs> <laughs> with what you're going through, like, uh -huh. um, I talked to Oda, like, that Friday. Mm -hmm. And she's like, uh, she said she told your mom, she's like, the boy coming. And she said, Mom told me, Put that chair right there. She anticipated you coming with her whole <laughs> countenance change. Yeah. And it's sort of like when your character, like you said, when you show up, the situation should change as a dad, as a brother, as a man. Amen. More so God. Amen. How much more so? How yeah. much more so? So yeah. when you're saying that, because we should rejoice, you know, even with me going to get my apartment, I'm rejoicing now. Not, I, they haven't called yet, right. but I'm rejoicing yeah. because I'm believing God for yeah. the next move that I got to make. You know, and I, I, my faith ain't in them, it's in Him that no matter what, I'm looking forward to my move. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Him guiding me. I'm more so, right now, I'm more so celebrating the fact that I'm getting my life in an alignment unto Him than what the success of it is or the accomplishment of it. Amen. The success of what I'm doing is not the apartment. The success is me lining my life up with him that no matter what happens, it's his will. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He mentions uh, Lebanon. He mentions uh, Carmel. And he mentions Sharon. Those are beautiful places. Mm -hmm. But they also are abundant places. They, they also are feudal. Feudal? Am I saying that right? Uh, futile. Yeah. They also uh, have abundance of vegetation. Yes. <laughs> fertile. They are fertile. fertile. <laughs> Not fertile, but yeah, fertile. They're fertile, they're fertile areas. Right. And, and they, they, they're productive. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it is when you bring God into a situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. it, it may go from uh, lack to abundance. Amen. It may go to uh, desert to, to uh, flourishing uh, vegetation. Amen. You may go from starving to, to, to fool, amen, from broke to, to, to wealthy uh, when, when we bring God into the situation, amen. Uh, verses, verse 3, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of fearful heart, be strong, fear not, behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Amen. God is, uh, God is a God of salvation. Amen. Uh, he, he does a lot of stuff. Man. He creates. He heals. He restores. But, but, but the main thing <laughs> for us, I mean, if I don't get the healing, right? If my, my credit score never reaches uh, 850, amen? If I don't get the house, if I don't get the promotion, uh, I, can, I can hold on to the fact that I'm saved. Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, what am I saying? It, it, it ain't going to always be like this. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not, I don't care what the situation is, how bleak it is, how gloomy it is, how dark it might be right now. I can tell you confidently, not even knowing what your situation is, that it's not going to always be like this. It's going to get better. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's going to get better. And so, um, in verses 3 and 4, the prophet Isaiah calls for the encouragement of the weak and the fearful. Weak and fearful. Two of the devices of the enemy, amen? He wants us weak. He wants us afraid, amen? When we get to the next chapter, you're going to see how he, how he uh, tries to intimidate us, amen? You're going to see how he tries to uh, uh, use propaganda and, and, and half-truths to, to, to scare us and get, off, get us to uh, uh, give up or uh, take our eyes off of uh, the Lord, amen, uh, and take our trust from where it should be, trusting in the Lord and trusting in other things, amen. I was reading some of the uh, commentaries that didn't explain it. Mm -hmm. It says, we use our hands to work with. Those with weak hands are not working for the Lord as they should. Mm -hmm. We use our knees to progress with and to pray with. Those with feeble needs are not progressing with the Lord and praying as they should. Amen. 
Amen. It's just like you exercise in any other muscle. As you use them, they're going to get strong. And if you don't use them, they're going to get weaker. Amen. What you got, Dad? Don't feel like you can't jump in there now. Anybody can jump in. You can just just buy stuff. I get in there, man. Okay. <laughs> We're going to say, say something for you. Uh, verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man weak, uh, leap, lame man leap as a harp, and the tongue of the dumb sing, not just talk, but sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and the streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, uh, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. So we're talking about uh, miracles of divine healing. Uh, and the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame leaping like, like a deer. Mm -hmm. And these just kind of underline the radical nature of God's kingdom. That's how it's going to be in God's kingdom. We, we know at, at, the, at, the, at the end, uh, the church is going to be raptured. Uh, you're going to get the great tribulation. And after that, uh, Jesus is going to establish his kingdom for a thousand years. After that, Satan's going to be re released for a while. He's going to get all the kingdoms together, and they're going to come again. Jesus. Jesus is going to come down on the white horse, uh, and he's going to uh, annihilate. After that, we got the kingdom age, right? When, when God is uh, the new heavens and the new earth, and those things, amen? Uh, the new Jerusalem, all those things coming down like the, the, the bride, adorned for the bridegroom. And, and, and then in that day, there won't be any sickness. There won't be any 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 illness, no weakness. Uh, nobody, no, no blind, no deaf, amen. Uh, it's going to be um, miraculous. We're all going to be, uh, we're all going to be healed. We're all going to be, uh, nobody's going to be lame, amen. And that's the, the radical nature of God's kingdom. It brings wholeness and healing. In terms of the world, like that would say, upside down. Uh, verse 8. And an highway shall be there, a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Highway of holiness, amen. The unclean shall not pass over it, <clears throat> but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereof. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So there's not going to be any sorrow. There's not going to be any sighing. Uh, we're just talking about everlasting joy upon their heads. Uh, but those are the last verses of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, chapter. Uh, so the concluding, the concluding verses of chapter, uh, of the chapter verses 8 through 10, talk about a highway called the way of holiness, where the unclean will not travel, indicating the divine protection promised to God's people. The offerings, uh, a comforting message this offers a comforting, comforting message, message of how believers, when walking in God's way, are kept safe and secure. Amen. So, even now, we should be walking on that highway of uh, holiness. Amen. We should be walking on that highway of holiness right now. Uh, we don't have to wait. Matter of fact, if we do wait, <laughs> it might be too late. We got to be walking. We got to be holy because He's holy. That's what the Bible says, right? Be holy. That's Jesus. That's all. I like the verse for eight. It says the way of holiness. Mm -hmm. I like that. I remember back when I was going to faith, I was starting to learn how to say, you know, walking in the way of holiness. This is my first time seeing it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I like that. It, it, it's really saying exactly what you're saying. That's a way mm -hmm. we should walk. That's right. And a way in holiness to walk. And this highway is only for those who are already walking in the ways of the right. Lord. 
Yeah, no unclean. You can't get on there if you're unclean. Yeah. Yeah, man. If you're not already, you, you, you're going to be lost. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I like what you said, that it's, it's for those that are already. You know, get on there and get ready. Mm -hmm. As you walk in that way, he take you to that highway. So, okay, because you're there, it's sort of like, even when I think about what Jesus called the disciples, he didn't call nobody that was like, that was already doing mm -hmm. something. That's, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. He just went and came and got him and put him to it. Like he told uh, Paul, I mean, John, he said, I'm going to make you fishes of men. And when he called Peter, he said, I'm going to make you fishes of men. So when they came, they were fishermen. Amen. Already doing the work of fishing. Now I'm going to show you the highway and the way of holiness. Amen. So you know that way. Now I'm going to show you, but because you're doing that, I look at your heart and I see who you are. Now let me show you the highway of holiness. Amen. One of the things I pray every morning in my daily uh, prayer time, I pray that we walk like Jesus. Amen. And I base that on Galatians 5.16 where it says that we walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And Ephesians 4.1 where it says that we walk worthy of the calling with which we were called. And Colossians uh, 1 10, where it says that we may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So my prayer for us every day, every morning, is that we walk like Jesus, because that's how Jesus walked. I mean, He 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 didn't stray, He didn't uh, trip, He didn't fall, He didn't stagger you. Amen. He He He, he walked in that way. Amen. He walked that way of holiness. And you know it, you know. Yeah. If, if he was coming, you had to put away your, your, your joint. You couldn't, you, you know, you had to put your joint away. Mm -hmm. You had to put your strong drink away, you know, because Jesus was coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the old days, we used to do that for our elders. Yeah. In the old days, we would do that for a man of God. Amen. Uh, we had, you got your loud music on and you're going down the street and you pass by the church, what you do? You turn down your music. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. If there's a, a funeral going on at the graveyard over there, you turn down your music. If, if grown men are walking on the sidewalk, you get off the sidewalk and let them pass. Yeah. Amen? Uh, so we, we don't walk like that anymore. My, my son has been robbed twice. <laughs> working. Working. Right? Uh, today uh, was the second time he got robbed in the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. Young black men. Mm -hmm. Black on black crime. Doing it to ourselves. They could be somewhere working. Yeah. Like he's working. But instead, I, I want to check your car door to see if it's open so I can go in there and get your stuff while you're working. How, how are we walking? As, as black men, I can even say that as black men. How are we walking? I, I look at dad and dad's got a, he's got an air about him, yeah. right? So he walks a certain way. And so you know, no foolishness. <laughs> yeah. Dad is a man, that's a man right there, yeah. right? And so you don't come to a man any kind of way. You got to come to a man correct, because yeah. that's how a man walks, mm -hmm. right? And so we got to walk circumspectly of how we've been called, of our calling. Mm -hmm. We got to be mindful of who God has called us to be, and we got to walk that way. And then it can't be something that we flip on and flip off, mm -hmm. right? It's got to be a consistent thing, because that's how that's how we. That's how we frame our, um, that's how our reputation is built. Right. And, our, and, and our character is only as strong as our reputation, which is built day by day, minute by minute, word by word, deed by deed. Everything that we do builds up our character or breaks down our character. And so if I'm not walking that way of holiness, if I only do it at church, then the people that's in my house are going to know I'm not doing it. Amen. And, and, but if I'm only doing it in my house and I'm not doing it at church, or if I'm not doing it at work, or if I'm just doing it uh, on Sundays and, and on Wednesday, then the people that I run into on Mondays and Tuesdays, they they on it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to walk that highway. Dad, like Dad said, we got to be walking that holiness thing. We got to be doing that holiness thing before we can even get on that highway. Amen. But that's the place. That's a place of safety and security when we walk in, in God's way. God's gonna, God's gonna protect us. Amen. Anything else on thirty-five? All right. I so like that where it said that they will in the line with singing. Ah. <laughs> Amen. You know that's gonna be a wonderful day right there. They coming in with. That's it. gonna be jubil, ju, jubilism and 
what if we came into the church saying, yeah. You know how we got to do it. They got to prime us. They got to pump us up. Come on, stand up on your feet and give the Lord a praise. Go, come on, praise the Lord. Come on, let's get praise break right quick. Come on, y'all get hyped up. Let's. We got to have our hype man getting us primed and pumped up so we can praise the Lord. And we don't want to do it too long either. All right, we want to. We want a, a certain amount of time, and we want to sit down. <laughs> and you know the uh, back in the day there, it used to be. Like that, you know, the choir would start out there and they was they were marching. They would come in singing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I remember that. I, I used to be in a choir. <laughs> you had a choir robe on and you're clapping out the, the, the music stars and the yeah. doors open and you come in and you're doing your, I mean, your step. Yeah. Be you, stepping too. Yeah, and you get yeah. to your spot and then y'all just y'all y'all already singing, but then you, you take it up. You get on when they come all around and get in the choir stand. You like it go to a whole nother level. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's up. Everybody's up. Everybody's happy. Everybody's singing. Yep. Yep. Come in and sing. I remember that too bad. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, 36. So now we're going to change from a, perspe a pr prophetic uh, tone and a um, judgment tone to, to more of a historic tone. Uh, so what we're going to talk about now can be found in 2 Kings and uh, 2 Chronicles. 2 Kings 18 and 2 Chronicles 32. And we, we hit those when we went through uh, those, those books uh, some, some years ago. <laughs> it's been some minutes, right? Uh, the book of Isaiah can be divided into two halves. Uh, chapters 131 through 39 and chapters 40 through 66. And like I said, 36, 37, 38, 39 kind of bridge it with this uh, historic uh, events of Hezekiah. All right, um, uh, here we talk, we, we see uh, the power of words and propaganda. Uh, we see some of the things that have been prophesied already about the southern kingdom, how uh, the threat of Assyria uh, and, and, and God telling them not to go to Egypt, but to trust him uh, when they come. So, so now we see uh, what happens. We see the fulfillment of, of, of that uh, prophetic word. Amen. And so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be looking at the power of words. We're going to be looking at propaganda. Uh, uh, King Sennacherib, uh, his field, our, our commander is going to use words as weapons. Uh, he's going to be uh, trying to demoralize and scare the people of Judah. And, and that's how it is today. That's what Satan wants to do. He don't want to fight us. He don't want to fight you because he might he might lose, yeah. right? Because uh, you know you, you got Jesus with you, so if if, if he got to fight you, he got to fight Jesus, right? Just like if somebody want to fight Malcolm, they got to fight me. If somebody want to fight uh, Apostle, they got to fight Dad. If somebody want to fight Tamario, they got to fight you, right? And so uh, he don't want to fight you, but 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 he wants to beat you, uh, and the way he wants to beat you is by you just giving up, right? You just don't even try. Right, you, I'm gonna intimidate you out the gate, and so you don't even you don't even get in the ring with me, right? You don't even train for the fight. You don't even think about fighting because you're scared, you're intimidated, uh, and, and and the easy thing to do, which is what uh, Satan came to Jesus with in the garden, he's like, just turn these stones and hey, just bow down and worship me. I give you all this stuff. You ain't got to down the cross, man. We can we can we can skip all that stuff. Nobody, you don't want down the cross. I don't want you down the cross. Just bow down right now and worship me. I'll give you all that stuff. And you get it. But anyway, we're gonna see, we're gonna see the power of words. And before we get there, I wanna I just wanna drop Ephesians 4 and 29 uh, on, on us uh, as a church. Uh, and how we should be speaking. Right? It says, uh, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the edifying, uh, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So we should be speaking the truth in love, as it says in Ephesians 4 and 15. Uh, that we may grow up in all things. Uh, and we unto Christ who is the head. That's how we should be speaking. Amen. I shouldn't be uh, breaking you down with my words. I shouldn't be backbiting. I shouldn't be gossiping. But I should be, I shouldn't let no corrupt communication proceed out of me. Amen. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, verses uh, 1 through 3. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defensed cities of Judah and took them. 
and the king of Assyria sent Rabshaki from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Eliakim Hilkiah's son, which was over the house, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. So, uh, they're in Lachish, which is one of the cities uh, of Judah, uh, and they're uh, defeating. They, they've been defeating city after city after city. They, they, they started up north uh, with, the, uh, with the northern kingdom and uh, Syria, uh, not Assyria, but Syria. They defeated them and they came down, and now they're uh, attacking all of the uh, southern cities, and uh, they, they're in Lachish. And the king, uh, he says, go to Jerusalem and uh, let them know what's going to happen if they don't surrender, right? Uh, Lachish was a fortified city about 30 miles southeast of Jerusalem. Rabshika is not the guy's name, that's, that's uh, the chief of the officers, he's a, a field commander, right? Uh, so the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, is attacking the, uh, the, the, the cities. And, and this kind of sets the stage for the entire conflict, right? Because he don't, what, what they do, what they did in those days, they wouldn't like scale the walls, they wouldn't uh, ram the walls and, and break them down. What they would do, they would, put the, they would seize the city, they would surround it, and they would just wait them out. They cut off the water supply, uh, cut off the food supply, whatever. Uh, so they couldn't get any more food in, they couldn't get any more water in, and whenever the water and the food ran out, and as we read in previous chapters, they'd be eating babies. Right? And so, um, they would just wait them out. Sometimes it was, it was months, sometimes it was years, sometimes it was a whole lot of years. They, they might wait 10 years, all right, uh, and then take the city, because what, what, they ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> you send about uh, 1,500 of your troops out there, and you rotate your men in and out, whatever, whatever, uh, and you just wait them out. You might be waiting on them, and you might be waiting on somebody else over here, but you got them seized, besieged, and, and, and you just wait them out. And uh, instead of us doing that, you go over there and you talk to them, and you let them know uh, that they need to just surrender. They need to just uh, give up. Amen? And so, uh, verses, uh, let's, let's, let's look at 4 through 10. You got anything on that? Anything at the opening? I was thinking like when you said that, it's like what you said when Jesus was in the, uh, in the wilderness, uh -huh. Satan came to him. See, this is the thing. Satan knew who he was. Mm -hmm. He knew who you are. That's right. He going to suggest to you as if he got the power when he really know he don't have the power. Sometimes people will come and try to intimidate you because they already know they already are less, they, they're weaker than you, mm -hmm. but they're going to try to convince you right. to give them what they want. Because mm -hmm. like you said, they don't want to fight. Right. Say don't want to attack you. If, if he know you stand, like you said, if they are walking down the street, he bring a certain presence with him to where people like, I ain't going to mess with that guy. Anymore. And that's, even with this, what I'm reading, it's like he's coming to say, and y'all just gonna surrender to us. <laughs> Who you believe in? <laughs> see now, see, cause the enemy knows who he fighting already. He knows, see, he don't want you to know who you are, God. Right. He knows who God is in you. That's why he coming at you. A lot of times it makes sense too. If you think about the, the Northern Kingdom, you got 10 tribes up there, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of bodies, right? Son of the king got two tribes. So if they if we defeated them, come on. We defeated ten tribes up there. You got two tribes down here with y'all don't stand a chance. Yeah. Right? And they're gonna say stuff like that. They're gonna say, we, we defeated everybody. Nobody has 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 beat us yet. Mm. They're gonna say stuff like, your God sent us. The same God that you're praying to and you trusting in, that's the same God that sent us. Mm. So just, just go on give up, man. Stop playing around. Go on give up. Uh, so, so propaganda and, and um, threats, right? Propaganda, a, a lot of times it's got truth to it. 
that's how Satan deals. He'll, he'll come with some truth, right? It might just be 5% lie, you know? Or he might just get you to question the truth. Uh, did God really say, if you ate the fruit, you fine? Did he really say that? Yeah, that's just like did, did he really say that? Now, I, he ain't lying. He's just asking a question, right? Did God really say that you're going to die if you eat the fruit? Yeah. Or he might say, if you be the son of God. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, if you are, yeah. then do this, right? If you are, that's an easy thing for the Son of God. Just, just these rocks right here, just make them break. You're the Son of God, all right? Go ahead and do that. What harm is that's a little thing, right? That ain't no big thing. It's a little thing. Verse four. Uh, I'm going down through ten. So I'm going to read my. And Rabshaki said unto them, Now he's at the aqua deck. Well, he's at the aqua lock, right? Uh, where, where the water comes in. He, he got all the way there, some kind of way, right? And he's talking, uh, the men are on the wall, they can hear him, and then the delegates that, that uh, Hezekiah sent out to him, they, they can hear him, right? Uh, but he's in a he's in a vulnerable place. I, I'm in a place where I can uh, stop your water or I can affect, affect your water, right? The, the lifeline to your city, I'm right, I'm, he's right there, right? That's where he's, that's where he's talking to him from. Uh, I, I, uh, and Rabshaki said unto them, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus said the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, said thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now, on whom dost thou trust? that thou rebellest against me. Lo, thou trusted in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Whereon, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. But if thou say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken down? And said to Judah and to Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar. Now therefore give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria. And I will give thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thou trust on Egypt? for chariots and for horsemen. And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, go up against this land and destroy it. So he's coming with, well, he's coming with, he's coming with, with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Most of it's true, right? He's telling them the same thing that Isaiah has been telling them. Don't trust Egypt. Yeah. Egypt can't save you. Yeah. Don't look to them for, for safe, safety, for security. They, they can't do it. Egypt can't save it. I was thinking about that when you were reading. I was like, that's what Isaiah said. <laughs> you, run to, you run to Egypt and they can't help you. He's telling them the same thing that Isaiah, Isaiah had already told them. So it's like, he's, like you said, the propaganda. He's coming with a false confession. It's like this. He's saying some of the same things, but with the wrong, different motive. That's it. That's it. He, he, he's saying what God, God says it to get you to turn to him, mm -hmm. right? They're saying it to get them to, to, to turn away from God mm -hmm. and to turn to them. And so, yeah, different, different, same, same message, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the motive is different. The intent is different. The game plan is different. Yeah, but, but what he's saying <laughs> is true. He's not lying. He's not making none of this stuff up. Uh, Hezekiah came into office. What did he do? He took down all the high places, right? He, he took down all the altars, all the false gods. He took all that stuff down. And he said, you're going to worship right here where God said we're going to worship him. In the, in the temple. That's where you're going to worship him. None of that high place stuff. Not, not under my administration. We worship him right here in the temple where God said we're going to worship him. Now, uh, God ain't mad about that. That's what God wants. But uh, Rapshaki, uh, 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 the king of Assyria, they, they don't know that, that that's 
what God wants. They think, okay, you got rid of all those false gods. Who's going to protect you? You got rid of all those uh, altars, all those uh, high places. God got to be mad about that, right? Because he's a God, like the rest of these gods that we defeated. And so you got rid of all his high places. He got to be feeling some kind of way about that, right? That's what he thinks. He thinks in the, the, the worldly way. You got rid of all the, all the places to worship. Uh, that can't be happy. God can't be happy about that, right? And, and, and uh, it's true. He did get rid of all the high places. But his motive behind getting rid of all high places was uh, obeying God. Not displeasing God and making God upset about the fact that he got rid of his, his temple, right? Or his, uh, the high places and the altars that were not his. Uh, God says, I, I, I am God. There's no God beside me, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you'll worship me and me only. That's what God wants. God doesn't want all those high places. But uh, Rav Shaky, uh, Sennacherib, they don't, know, they don't understand that. Right, because they don't know the, the true and living God. All they know is these uh, hand-carved, these mm -hmm. handmade uh, idols that the other countries have and that they have that cannot protect, cannot save, cannot uh, secure, cannot provide. All they can do is be made by hand and be placed in place by the person that made them and, and worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know I think about when you're saying that as you're breaking it down like that, I'm thinking in the vernacular. Day. Mm. People, it's like at this time right here, God was making himself known through his people. A lot of That's people right. didn't know God That's at right. that time. And you look at the world today, a lot of people, see when we were coming up in our age, everybody knew about God. It's a lot of people right now don't even know about God. You can't take it, see back when we were coming up, you can take it for granted that when you said something about God. Right. People are new, but they had a certain reverence unto God. Now, it's a lot of people saying, oh, what God you talking about? <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of people don't know about God. So even with this, even with the way he's talking, we got a lot of people right now attacking the body of Christ the same way he is. And if we don't know who our God is in our life, mm. I thank God for how he has brought me through so many things. That in those things I got to know him for who he is. So can't nobody come. I remember one time I was talking to a friend of mine about some things about God. And I told him, I said, you know what? Because he just delivered me, I can't go with that. Because see, I know he just delivered me. So because of that deliverance he just brought me out of, I have no doubt who he is. I have no doubt who he is. What you're saying sounds good, but because he did this in my life. Mm -hmm. I was telling somebody today, I said, you know, you don't grow in good times. You grow in hard times. We don't want to go through hard times. Like this black chapter I just came out of, I'd be a fool to not have grown out of that chapter. Mm -hmm. And when you look at him, he's talking to these people. See, as I got to know, I know God's ear voice in my life now in a way that I didn't know him before I went through that storm. Because mm -hmm. when that storm happened, he was the one who brought me out. Now, and I'm, I know they're finna talk to him, like they're finna break down to him now, but I can see, and, and really even with this saying, it's like they tell him, talk to us right in our life. Talk to us right here. Don't mm -hmm. be talking to See, you trying to put fear in the people on the wall. Oh, yeah. You are see, we here to talk to you, but you talk, even when the Bible talks about don't pray, you when you pray and all, don't pray so loud because you got your reward. People, don't let everybody hear you praying so loud, Lord, in the name of Jesus. See, now you're putting on a show. Right. And that's what he's doing, he's putting on a show. Yeah. Because he want, he want, he want to intimidate as many, he want to affect as many people as he possibly can when he speaks. Because if y'all don't believe in me, then when these people on the wall, when I leave, then they gonna say I put doubt. I'm, I'm gonna spread as much doubt amongst your people as I can. Right. I wanna, I wanna ask all of them because some of them don't know God like y'all do. So yeah. hopefully I can get them to go when, when everything goes on. And he's standing before the people they're like, well, you know, he was kind of true, but that's what he <laughs> want. That's that's that's. Well, he ain't lying. Yeah, that's <laughs> what he want. That's how the devil is. Yeah. That's how the devil. Yeah, we is. can't trust Egypt. You know, we can't trust Egypt. Mm -hmm. God, you know, I, you know I said, I already told him, we can't trust him. <laughs> and you know, when Hezekiah came in and he's uh, 
destroying all the high places and, and, and uh, the altars and stuff like that. He, he, that's his mindset, right? That's his mindset. That's his passion. But everybody don't feel the same. Right? Some of them wanted those yeah. uh, high places. And some of them feel like, hey, maybe if we had those high places, if we had those idols, then maybe this wouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, we've been praying to uh, his God, and, and you see, you see where we at. We got, we got uh, yeah. uh, Syria coming against us. Yeah. So maybe if we was praying to all those other gods as well as his God, as you know, yeah. if one God is good, two gods got to be better, three gods got to be even better than that. You know what I'm saying? So he took away all our gods. And so maybe that's why these Assyrians are out here. Maybe that's why we're in this this this, this hole that we're in right now. Verse eleven. Then said. Eliakim and Shipna and Joah to Rabshakeh. Speak, I pray thee, unto thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And speak not to us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice, he got even louder, in the Jews' language, and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus said the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. So you can't trust Egypt. You can't trust your God, and you can't trust your king. You can't trust Hezekiah. <laughs> so they, they say, hey, man, uh, you know, break down a little bit, man. We, 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 we feel you. You're passionate. Yeah, you, you're screaming, and you're loud, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you're speaking some good Hebrew. We, 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 we can respect that, right? But, but take, take it down a notch and talk to us in the, in the Syrian language, man. We understand that stuff, man. You know, and, and, and we can relate it back to these people, but, but, but yeah, you, you scam people and stuff, man. Don't take all that. Mm -hmm. Calm down. And see, what I was seeing was, they were telling him, look, speak to us. See, everybody on the wall speak one language. Yeah. We understand your language. Right, right, so right. So don't tell us they their speak. language so <laughs> they can hear the mess you sing. Right. Talk to me. And that's how we are. It's like this. When you're trying to, when you go against a man of confidence in a situation he's confident about, uh -huh. he ain't easily shaken. And I'm quite sure that He's seeing them not easily shaken. So now instead of talking to them, he want to talk. He's trying to find the weak ear. Uh -huh. He's trying to speak to the weak ear. And I'm quite sure that they're standing there, and especially when they told him, hey man, you ain't got to talk to everybody. Talk to them. It's no coincidence that he speaks Hebrew, right? He's picked, he's handpicked for the job yeah. because he speaks the language, right? And so, uh, yeah, he's there as a delegate, and normally that's a uh, civilized meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit down and we talk, yeah. right? Uh, you need anything to drink? You comfortable? Is that AC hot? You good? Yeah. All right, yeah. so let, let's talk about how we can uh, resolve this thing peacefully. <laughs> that's, that's what delegations yeah. do. So that's when the king sends his delegates, and you send your delegates, and, and they talk, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't want to fight. You don't want to fight. Mm -hmm. How can we resolve this thing without fighting? Mm -hmm. Right? But, but, that's not what Rabshakeh is doing, right? Mm -hmm. His job is not to uh, mitigate the war. His job is not to uh, avoid the conflict. His job is to provoke it. Yeah, he, he, he wants to instill fear, he wants to intimidate, he wants to uh, uh, pass on this propaganda so that the people will say, well, bump this man. I'm coming down the wall. You, you, can I can I ride back with you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he's talking about uh, eating, eating your own dung uh, and, and drinking yeah. your own piss, which is what happens uh, at some point during the besiege, right? We got to see the besiege. We had a besiege for two years. They ain't got no food. They ain't got no water. What are they gonna do? They gonna eat their babies. They gonna eat their poop. And they gonna drink. Their, they got. They got. They got to do something, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, cannibalism. They gonna do what they gotta do. They got. They gonna have to. They gonna have to do something, right? I gotta eat something. I gotta drink something. So you want to stay up there and eventually get to that point? Yeah. Or you want to come down and come with us? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he's doing his job. He's doing it well. That's what he's paid to do. That's his yeah. job. 
Uh, verse 15. Yes, yes. Okay. Verse 15. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Don't trust Hezekiah, don't trust the Lord. Saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. The city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus said the king of Assyria, make an agreement with me by a present. Give us something, uh, a token, and come out to me. Come on down. And eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land your own, to a land like your own, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and, and, and vineyards. Don't sound good? Mm -hmm. Beware lest Hezekiah persuades you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Had any other gods of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He ain't lying. He's making this up. This is true stuff. Facts. Where are the gods of Hamath and Aphrath? Where are the gods of Saraviam? Uh, and have they delivered Samaria? That's the northern kingdom. Out of my hand. Who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand? that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. He is not making this stuff up. Mm -hmm. These are facts. Yeah. Facts. Hard facts. And if I go up on the wall and I'm listening to this, and I know that uh, Samaria is falling. I know yeah. that the, uh, the northern kingdom has already been carried away to Assyria and captive. I know that. So I know this Ralph Shaky. <laughs> he ain't lying. He's using psychological warfare, right? Yeah. Trying to weaken their, their faith in God. And, and, he, and he's coming with the threats. Uh, and it's not merely physical, it's just psychological. He's getting in their mind, right? So, he's painting the picture, right? You can stay on that wall, you can trust Hezekiah, you can trust your God, you can even trust Egypt if you want to. But I promise you, <laughs> None of them are going to save you, just like none of them were able to save any of the other countries, any of the other cities that we attacked. We are the undisputed champions of the world, right? And, and, and we're on a mission. And you know who put us on the mission? Your God. <laughs> Your God put us on a mission. We are here to fulfill that mission. And even so, he went to name in all the other countries all the other cities, all the other, your, their gods didn't help. So what makes you think your God will help? I, my king is the greatest, so <laughs> he's going to defeat you and your God. And the funny thing about it is, he don't know what he's doing, but when he's saying those things, he's actually challenging God. That's right. That's he's right. upsetting God. That's right. That's right. Mm. So, so you, you trash talking, God. Mm -hmm. Trash talk God. It was, it was a mistake back in Jordan's day to trash talk Jordan. Yeah, I've been right, 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 right. You trash talk him, uh, and, and, he, and he got to prove something now. I remember one time, I saw a video about a, earlier this year. Somebody was in Play for the Bulls, was trash talking Jordan. Jordan came to practice. When there was that practice, he said, he came to that practice, and he told the coach to come to practice. He said, come on. Me and you. I don't know if nobody else. <laughs> he dogged the guy. And then he threw him, he beat him. When he beat him back, he said, Don't you ever make me come out of retirement no more? <laughs> Imagine if he do that <laughs> with God, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much more would an all seeing, all knowing, all powerful yeah. God have to prove himself? Mm. Yeah. And I like a little trash talk when I'm playing ball. I like it. All right? I, I like it, right? Uh, I don't mind, I don't mind uh, going back and forth with it. I don't mind, yeah. right? I don't mind. Uh, my knees mind, but I don't mind. <laughs> but, but I ain't trash talking God. Yeah. I mean, I ain't lost my mind. I ain't trash talking God. That's, that's, that's insanity. But, but, but that's, what, that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's trash talking God. <sighs> Where are we at, 15? Uh, 
Oh man, we got missed. Yeah. <laughs> it goes fast. Uh, 21. But they held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. So he, they already been uh, instructed. instructed. They've already been uh, prompted to, to say what they said. Uh, uh, then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, that was over the household, and Shibna, the scribe, and Joah, uh, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent toward him, and told him the words of Rahab's. And so they, they were uh, prompted to say what they were supposed to say. And that's how they did us in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Navy, right? Uh, we, had, we had nuclear uh, weapons on the ship. But, but if somebody asked, we had to say, I can either confirm nor deny the presence of nuclear weapons on, on, our, on our vessel. We had to say that. We had to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody asked if we had nu nukes. Uh, and, and we had to say other stuff for other reasons, you know, mm -hmm. based on uh, what, what somebody might ask when we go ashore. And so we were uh, uh, trained, right, to say that uh, we said anything else, <laughs> it'd get ugly. <laughs> yeah, so we were prepared when they came with their questions, right? And it's just like the men on the wall. They said not a word because Hezekiah had told them, don't, don't say that. I got two things to say about that. Go ahead. In verse 21, he said, but they held, held their peace. See, you gotta realize when somebody trying to do, now imagine the psychological warfare that he just reversed. When somebody in your face talking mm -hmm. much trash, much junk, mm -hmm. much I do this to you, I do this to you, and you just stand there like see the puffing and puffing, slobbing. The best way to to defeat a foolish situation is don't even acknowledge it. Right, right, right. Now imagine what he thinking when he going back. Man, I told him all that. They didn't budge at all. See now, they see it's like this. If if I if you coming at me with all that, and I respond, now mm -hmm. you know where I stand. Right. Now you know where I am. But if I don't say a word, now that same foolishness that you see, you thought you was gonna get. If I ain't, I don't, I ain't giving them to go back. On. You got you didn't get me riled up. Yeah. You ain't pushing no buttons. You ain't pushing that buttons. So you don't so know now, all that foolishness you that you did. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be ringing back in your head as you go back home. You're like, he was like, what they say? Second guessing yourself. Yeah. See, when they go back to, to the king of Syria, they're gonna be like, what they say? <laughs> they said, yeah. <laughs> they said a word. Did they give up? They said, they said nothing. Not one word. So now you think, think about when you get ready to get in a fight with somebody. Man, I do you this, I do you this, I do you this. And they got me sitting there like, you don't know what to think, because you, you don't, don't know, know where that man thinking. coming yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he did. And like I said, and they held their peace. Yeah, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants yeah. to take your peace. That's it. And a lot of times we give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. We give it to him. So Hezekiah's officials returned to him with torn clothes as a sign of distress. Mm -hmm. We, um... And all the lies and the propaganda that's going out, we got to promote Jesus. That's our, that's our mantra this year, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you can see how Rapshiki, he, he says a lot of truth, mm -hmm. right? And so when we're promoting Jesus, we got to say the whole truth. Because yeah. he says he's the truth, the way in yeah. life, right? Mm -hmm. I am the truth, the way in life. So, we, we got to tell the whole story. We got to tell the whole truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, we can't water it down, right? Uh, the wages of sin is yeah. death, right? Uh, the gift of God is eternal life. But, uh, so we got to tell them the whole thing. We got to tell them the whole story, the whole gospel, right? Uh, the good news. Uh, you in sin, you need a savior, and uh, it's only one. <laughs> yeah. It's only one way. Yeah. Uh, that's the truth. That's offensive. Uh, that's going to get you in trouble, right? It's not politically correct. But uh, that's the truth. So while we're promoting Jesus, we, we got to be uh, truthful. We can't be like Rob Shaky and bring 99% of the truth and then put that 1% in there of, of the lie. Or our motives can't be uh, to promote ourselves or to get rich or to get famous or to get girls or to get money or whatever. Our, our motive in promoting Jesus has to be him. 
It's got to be on them. The uh, program, the agenda, um, the backdrop, all got to be in. And he's got to get all the glory and all the uh, honor and all the praise. It's all got to be in. Because if I'm getting the glory, if I'm getting the praise, if I'm getting the honor, then I'm rap sheep. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 that's all propaganda. That's all lies. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> What's got that? That's good, good stuff, man. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> you want to close us out? Uh, yeah, Father God, we come before you right now. We give you praise on and thanks, Lord, for we're sitting here. Seeing how you're giving victory, you're giving peace in the middle of, of confrontation. And the, 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 even though the situation looks overwhelming, but we are not looking at the situation of the overwhelming. We're looking at the situation from your perspective. And allow us to use this example that when times and turmoils come up in our life, we can look at you. Like Dad says, let us tell our situations about who you are and not let our situations keep telling us about Amen. them. We can't keep running to you telling we We've already been given your victory. Yes. You've already given us your authority. Yes. We went to hell and took the keys back and gave us back our authority. Let us operate in what you've already given us. Yes. And let this be an example to not just an example to speak on, but to live by. From this day forward, let us learn more and more about you every day. Thank you for giving us your word to study, to learn, to know who you are, and help us to understand how to be God-minded and not man-minded. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise.